realized that my dad really had my back around the time when my Polish-born Bubby, my mom's mom, got married for the fourth time. <laughs> we were in her kitchen drinking tea, of course, and Bubby asked me to sing something at her wedding. Well, I told her I had the perfect song. It was in Hebrew. It was all about a safta, a grandmother, who was teaching her granddaughter all about love. Hani vehasafta yashavnu b'tzavta aliyad medura b'chatzer Hani mishtokek l'sipur miratek vehasafta chizbat tisape Wait, 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 Micheli. Vus is dus. This word, chizbat? No, this is not Hebrew. She was right. She caught me. It was in Arabic. I had just forgotten. No big deal, Bubby. My father taught me this song on one of our road trips. He's Jewish, but he was born in Iraq, so he speaks a little bit of Arabic, too. That's just a word, Bubby, I assured her. No, nothing more. Shah, Micheli. There is no such a thing. Just a word. No, a word makes a feeling. And the feeling of an Arab is different than the feeling of a Jew. Well, I, I tried to tell her that I, I, I really liked hearing these two languages together. I liked how it felt. This mingling, this helping of each other, helping to articulate their feelings. They were like borrowing. They were like neighbors. You know, just people living with each other's differences rather than always fearing them. No, Micheli, these Arabs have given us nothing to feel but fear. She said, my sister, she helped to build this land of Israel. And those Arabs were so dangerous. Every day, they dropped rockets on them into Haifa. Every day, my sister lived in fear. It got me thinking. It actually got me thinking about all the times we were feared, my family and I. I mean, I remember many times traveling with my dad, the border control would always pull us over. I remember this one time, it was on the border between Indiana and Illinois. Yeah, why is there a border between Indiana and Illinois? <laughs> but nonetheless, the border control pulls us over and step into our dilapidated van and shine that light in our eyes. Hey, sweetie, he says to me, what's your name? How old are you? Ooh, big girl. Who's driving the van? Your dad. <laughs> Come on. He looks kind of, you know, different. More like one of those Middle Eastern types you might see on the news. You sure there's nothing you want to tell us, sweetie? I guess I got the answers right each time they'd let us go. Oh, we never talked about these moments. Nope. We just drove off in search of the nearest Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh, it was the beacon of American civilization, according to my dad. I'll tell you, though, traveling out of the country wasn't a picnic either. He was always detained, my dad, either because of his dark eyes or the dark stamps on his passport. And sometimes he'd flirt his way through their insistent questions. Sometimes it worked, and, you know, sometimes not so much. <laughs> I tell you... I had no idea what was going on. Left alone to wait, I started to wonder, 
Had we done something wrong? Was my dad bad? Were we? I mean, clearly, those Middle Eastern guys that the border control is so intent on finding, well, they must have done something really bad to pull us over each time. I wonder if we were supposed to be afraid. Afraid of those people that Bubby talked to me about? Those people who dropped the bombs? The ones that we need to be afraid of who look like Arabs, like my dad and like his family. But see, my dad and his family, they were from the Arabs, but they weren't Arabs. I mean, their Arabic even sounded different. Their family had lived in Baghdad for some 2,000 years, and then one night, they had to escape. All of a sudden, on Shabbat, because of the pogroms there. Their family store had been burned down. The Farhud, these massacres, just wiped out the Jews in their quarter. And then I remember my dad showed me this building in Tel Aviv with a bullet hole that he said came from an Arab gun through this Jewish property and into his own brother. All these stories, all this quiet fear, this silent rage living in me, living in my bubby. And then one day my dad asks me, Michelle, Michelle, how you learn to feel this way? How you learn to be so afraid? How you learn to hate this Arab, to fight against for something that happened to my family? When Michelle, I don't need to fight. I do not hate the Arabs. I do not blame them. No. Michelle, I am them. And so too you are. This is human nature to want the same thing as your brother has, no? It is not an Arab gun and a Jewish building. My daughter, it is a people. One who is born accidentally under one side, who want the same thing as the person born also accidentally on the other side. No, Michelle. How both can find their dream. I think my father found his dream through action. He left Iraq, he left Israel, and he came here to America, and he found his way. But he never turned his back on the people from whom he came. Even now, he works mostly with Arab men. I notice he jokes and laughs in a way that's some kind of shorthand to them. When we go to Israel, he drives us right into Gaza just to buy a piece of fruit or to the Shuk, the Arab markets, places that Jews are all but forbidden to go. But he does this not as a statement, but just as a natural action because he belongs there. Because we all do. Sometimes I wish my bubby was still alive so that I could tell her more. So I could tell her about that little girl I was sitting in the back seat of that van, scared. Because maybe that little girl is like a little Arab girl who's sitting in the back seat of her family's car on their family road trip through Israel. And the border control, just doing their border control job, pulls them over because they look to this or to that. And she's scared. Maybe it's my same story. I would make us a glass of tea 
and I would take my Bubby's hand and I would sing for her. Another song that my dad taught me on a road trip in Arabic. It says, I'm not afraid of the darkness. I have no fear. Come, let us sing together in the night. Let's not fear it alone. Yalla bila kho Yalla hanwati bila yali Yalla bila kho